So I've swatched out all the blues that I own and I'm going to take all these blues and set them to the side here. I'm going to mix each one of these with Hansa Yellow Medium and we're going to see just exactly what each of these blues will do. Now I do have my dot cards here so if I think that there's another blue that I don't have I might try to mix it with that but I think I have a comprehensive range of all the Daniel Smith blues. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my wet brush on this full mass tone of each of these swatches and I'm just going to lay it down here on this and then I'm going to take a little bit of Hansa Yellow. Hansa Yellow is strong and then I'm going to mix it and see what kind of green I get. Here we go. And I first one I mixed with was Cobalt Teal. Let's get a little bit more because that's not coming off very saturated. I'm going to just get it off. It's going to kind of lift that up a little bit. So Cobalt Teal with Hansa Yellow Medium. Now don't forget Hansa Yellow is really strong in tint tinting strength. And that's a really pretty spring green you can get with that. Okay, so now I'm going to take Ultramarine Turquoise, which that might be stronger, and then I'm going to mix it with Hansa Yellow, and I get a deeper spring green. I think one thing about blues is I don't think you can ever have too many blues. Red's a different story. So, okay, so now I'm going to take Thalo Turquoise. Now, Thalo is a really strong color, so you w won't need much of it either. It's comparable in tinting strength with Hansa Yellow. So you mix that with Hansa. And you're going to get a really pretty green. I think I just need to get a little bit more water. And you can shift that either way. So if you wanted it a little bit darker, you could go and make it a darker green. And then if you wanted it a little bit lighter, you could add some more Hansa and get it lighter. Oh, that's pretty. So you get you a good range. Okay, now with Cerulean Blue. And this will make a nice green as well. Get a little bit of Hansa. Oh, isn't that pretty? That's pretty, pretty, pretty. Grab a little water. Oh, that's nice. You can get just such a range of greens with all the different blues. So let's go to manganese. Now I took that manganese. Let's see, can you see that? Manganese blue is not very strong. So I'm just going to use a little bit of Hansa. And it's a light blue. So it's going to be a lighter green. Really spring, fresh Easter time type green. Let's add a little bit more manganese and see if we can shift it at all. And we can. Okay, now down here I'm going to go to the next one, which is Thalo Blue Red Green Shade. And that is going to be strong. Thalo Thalo colors are extremely high tinting. Thalo blue green shade. Really high tinting strength. Okay, now let's get some Hansa yellow. Maybe not that much. That makes just a beautiful permanent green color. Really nice 
strong green. Now keep in mind you can change all these greens with adding a little bit of red to it or brown to make it more earthy and more natural. These are just a mix of blue and yellows. So now I'm gonna go permanent or phthalo blue red shade. So this might be a little earthier. Phthalo blue red shade. Okay, a little bit of yellow. And that's gonna be darker because it's red leaning. So that's gonna be a little bit more natural looking. Isn't it amazing? I think it's amazing. It's like magic, only real. So here is cobalt blue with Hansa, a little bit of Hansa yellow. Oh, that's a really pretty green. That's nice. And that's going to granulate. Beautiful, beautiful green. I'll put at the end of the video, I'll put a close up high resolution photo of this. And I'll put each one cobalt teal. Oh, that cobalt teal and Hansi yellow. That's granulating really pretty. Ultramarine, I'll put the names of them underneath. So, all right. So now I'm going to go with Vertiter. Vertiter blue. So far I think I like the cobalt the best. Get a little bit of yellow and I'm trying just to get a little bit of maybe you know just a tad of yellow. This is pretty. It's natural. It's a little deeper more hunter green in color. Pretty 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 pretty. I think it's interesting how you can mix all the greens. Oh wait, you didn't see me do that one. So let me empty these out again. So far my favorite is the cobalt and I'm liking this, or cobalt teal and the cobalt blue. I'll be interested to know which one you guys like the best. You know, and you can do your own experiments with whatever paints you have. Let me know what you come up with because different paints the particles might be ground more smaller you know that's that's how you get ultramarine and french ultramarine french ultramarine is smaller pigments okay so here is french ultramarine and this is your staple blue that you see on most palettes or ultramarine Pretty. That's kind of a teal color. I'm going to put a little bit more yellow in there just to get it to go green. Pretty. That makes a nice sap green color. You just about don't need any red or anything. It's just a real natural sap green. Okay, now just, just for kicks, I'm going to do this cobalt blue violet. Now it's going to be, it's purple, so I'm probably going to get a gray or a brown because if you remember our color theory, the color across from yellow is purple, so they cancel each other out and they'll become neutral. I expect this to go brown. And it does turn a little bit green, but it's a deep brownish olive green. So that's good to know. It's kind of pretty. It's like an olive khaki green. So that's kind of pretty. Okay, let's go to our next one, which is in Danthrone Blue. This ought to be interesting. It's a real dark, very high tinting strength. It's strong color. Now I'm going to get a little bit of yellow, just a little bit on the tip of my brush there. I don't know if you can see it, just a, just a teeny tiny bit. I'm gonna mix it up. Oh, that is pretty. I just love the magic that happens. 
Oh gosh, that's gorgeous. Oh, I love the color that made. That made that really deep green. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, that's, that's kind of a fave. This, this, French Ultramarine. Mmm, pretty, pretty, pretty. All right, so what am I going to do here? Now I'm going to have to go to my sketchbook, I think. So now I am going to go to Prussian Blue. And that's right up here. We're going to put that over here in our mixing tray. Okay, pick up a little bit of yellow on my thing, on my brush. And that makes a really pretty green. Okay, now I'm just going to, I'm going to mark these as I go. Okay, I'm just going to write Prussian. But we have to remember that Prussian blue is fugitive. You know, I say if you love the color, paint with what you love. So you can do other things to make it light fast. You can put it behind UV glass. You know, you you know, not hang it in the sun. You can do other things. Mayan Blue Genuine. It's not very strong, so I'm not going to add very much yellow at all. Maybe just a little bit more. Okay. I, I'm not crazy about that one. It's just kind of weak. Mayan Blue Genuine. I'm going to go to May and Blue Dark, which is like that indigo color. It's still not very strong. But I think it's better because it's a darker color. Man, makes me wonder about the indigo. May and Blue Dark. And this is why people might use indigo because it is stronger. I already know this from my pigment, from my experiments. Indigo is a much stronger color. Let's get some yellow. And yes, that makes nice green. So that makes nice dark green. I'm going to lighten it up again and put some more yellow. Oh, that makes a nice green. Probably why people use indigo instead of this May and Dark. Indigo. Indigo. This is really cool because it really informs you. And as far as what colors are you going to choose for your paintings. Okay, so here we're going to do Lunar Blue. This is a nice dark. Get some of that pigment off. Okay, let's get some yellow. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. I still like the indigo better. Let's put a little bit more yellow in there. We're probably going to get some more granulation in this one because it has that lunar black in it or PBK 11. I'm really going to put some water in there so we can see how that separates out. Okay, so this is Lunar. Lunar. So the next one's Sleeping Beauty. And I think we're going to get a similar result as we did with the Cobalt Teal. Not as strong. Let's get some of that yellow. Oh, that's pretty. Isn't that nice? Sleeping Beauty Turquoise. It probably is going to have more granulation. We'll just see how that separates out. Because that's really pretty. Mmm. That is really pretty. Let's do this Kyanite. Now, I really like Kyanite. Kyanite Genuine. It's just... It's just got a personality of its own. 
and I'll probably continue to use it. I like it with more muted earthy colors. It's a little hard to reactivate sometimes, but that really makes a pretty green. Oh, look at that lunar black or that lunar blue. This makes a pretty green too. I'm going to put a little bit more yellow in it. Get a little brighter. And this is kyanite. I'll put it right over here. I'm running out of room. And that will granulate pretty too. And it's got a little bit of a sparkle to it. This is kyanite. Blue Appetite, which is not very strong. You know, I, I would say that Blue Appetite and Kyanite, I like it, I like Kyanite mixed, but May and Blue Dark and May and Blue Genuine are colors that can be standalone. And I think if you want, you know, unless you just want the granulation properties, because I don't know if you can see this. I'll put it all at the end of the video because they are granulating beautifully over here. Just really pretty. Okay, so this is Blue Appetite. Really, really pretty. I just love color mixing. Blue Appetite. Let's do Lapis Lazuli. I don't know if I can get enough off of there. It was kind of sticky. I don't think so. So let me get it over here. Okay, so I don't know if I was cut off or anything, but this is Blue Appetite Genuine. And over here is kyanite. So we have one more to do and that's lapis loosely and it's kind of weak and I don't know what it is about this color. You know it, it feels like it's got a lot of binder in it. I'm not crazy about it but here it is mixed with Hansi yellow medium and it's pretty mixed. It's a pretty mix. So that's all the mixes and I will put these at the end of the video with a high resolution so you can see all the mixes up close and how they separate. I'll try to catch all the details in them. Talk to you later. Bye!